This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Well, and welcome into another edition of Three Ma. I am John Kurtz. Today we are talking K State offensive line, and I've got Derek Young of K State Online, Cole Manbeck, former beat writer from the Manhattan Mercury, with me to do just that as we continue our spring football previews. And this is one of the areas with the biggest question mark. Losing a lot from last year's offensive line in a position that has typically been very strong for the Wildcats. How can they replace a couple of future NFL offensive linemen? No matter what happens this year on the offensive line, you can wash it all down with a nice drink from our friends at Holiday Distillery. They've got your Penn Holiday bottled in Bond bourbon. They've got 360 vodka. Whichever you prefer, make sure that you go out and grab some bottles of those at your tailgate. If you're going to be on the golf course this spring and summer, whatever it might be, the weather has been terrific for that. Uh, great stuff to haul around there. Mix drinks, drink it straight, whatever you choose. Our friends at Holiday Distillery are great cats who support us on the pod, so please go support them. You know, it might it might lead you to nervously drink when you look at the offensive line and see that four multi-year starters, four players with multi-year starting experience are gone, including Cooper Beebe, who arguably was the best interior offensive lineman in the country and frankly maybe in the uh, conversation for best offensive lineman in the country period last year who had a tremendous college career I'm sure he'll be in the ring of honor at K-State someday and you're also losing KT Leviston who is is a guy that is probably going to be a draft pick so you've got a lot to replace here on this offensive line plenty of faces that have played a lot and guys that I think uh, there's been a lot of hope for in the future based on what their pedigree is and what the excitement level was when they came into the program. But it's one thing to have the the hype on paper. It's another thing to deliver when you're actually out there. So how confident are you feeling about this group right now, D.Y., as we sit in uh, in spring? Probably more confident than I should. I, I just I tend to have a lot of blind faith when it comes to the offensive line position at Kansas State because I don't remember the last time we came in or we – exited a season we were like man those guys weren't good at all like that's never happened to the chris climate and then i don't expect it to happen again yes you're losing four multi-year starters so if folks are like well maybe this is uncharted territory and this is going to be the time that it does his first year at kansas state was five seniors on the offensive line starting i believe um they all left people felt the same then five new starters and and the beat just went on and I think that was the maybe the no it was not the first year that Cooper BB started but uh he was a true I think he was a true freshman perhaps or maybe it was the first year he started as a rich or freshman I'm not sure but that group uh with all new starters uh the beat still went on right so uh even in I think it was a struggle of a year uh because it might have been the COVID season actually where they had five new offensive line starters but that wasn't the problem uh, with the with the offense or the team that year. So a uh, little bit of blind faith, a little bit that you still have some dudes that you know that can play. You brought in Easton Kilty, who was a really good player from the FCS level that will probably be your left tackle. You still have Taylor Portier. You still have Hadley Panther. You still have Carver Willis, who, who essentially was a starter down the stretch as, as well. So you you lose quite a few pieces, as you said, also of the multi-year starting variety, four of them. But because they still play more than five in considerably, uh, I, I just don't have that concern because I think Carver Willis can be good. I think Taylor Portier is good. I think Hadley Panther is good. I think Easton Kilty is going to be good. You'll, you'll have to figure out what you're going to do at the center position. You'll have to figure out how to, you know, um, integrate John Bo John Pastore and Andrew Langing as well. Maybe they're starters, maybe they're not. But I just think, um, I, I think the people will go on at the offensive line position because I think they've recruited it well and developed it well. Yeah, Cooper BB forty-seven career starts. KT Leviston thirty-two. Hayden Gillum twenty-seven. Christian Duffy forty-one. You add it all up, you're replacing one hundred forty-seven career starts on the Kansas State offensive line and a K-State offensive line that each of the last two years has rushed for some of the most rushing yards in 15, 20 years and averaged over five yards per carry each of the last two years, two of the highest yards per carry averages in school history when you look at it. So offensive line has been solid up front and 
replacing an All-American in B.B. Leviston, as John mentioned, who will likely play in the NFL as well. Tons of experience gone. But if you look at it, I mean, if you want to find an optimistic point of view, like you, you do have a decent amount of experience still returning. D.Y. mentioned Easton Kilty, who was the number five offensive tackle in the 247 sports transfer portal rankings, was the number four interior offensive lineman in the on three industry consensus rankings. Reason being is because he's so versatile that they've got him listed in multiple different areas because he's played four of the five stop spots in his career on the offensive line, transfer from North Dakota, started every game at left tackle at North Dakota last season and in 2022 as a sophomore, started 12 games at right guard, and then as a freshman started 11 games. Uh, the first three were at right tackle, the final eight at left guard. The only position he hasn't played is center. So tons of experience with Kilty. Hadley Panzer, over the last two years, has started 26 games at right guard. Taylor Portier is a six-year senior who had 363 snaps last year, played in all 13 games, and now he's another year removed from those back-to-back knee injuries that he suffered that were devastating season-ending injuries. I feel like he'll make a jump this year as he's another year removed, got more comfortable getting his strength back in those legs after the multi-injuries there. And then Carver Willis, honorable mention, all Big 12 offensive tackle last season. This is year five for him. Played in all 13 games last year with seven starts. And I thought he really came on in the back half of the season, was really solid. He struggled a little bit early, but I think he's a reliable piece. So when you look at the the guys up front, I mean, I think the question mark, I mean, there, there's multiple question marks. Can you know, Taylor Porty and Hadley Panzer both played right guard the majority of the time last year. Can can Taylor Portier or Panther slide over to left guard? How do they handle that? Andrew Linegang, another experienced guy that I forgot to mention that I think will step up this year. And I think Linegang might be one of the key pieces to this offensive line as well because he was thought to be a versatile guy that could play tackle and guard coming out of high school. So you've got some experience. You know, how do they come out of the gate and play, you know, and gel together as an offensive line? How do you get that cohesion going? Because it is, everybody's going to be playing kind of different spots. Uh, I I have to step in here, Cole. I I was looking through the roster earlier because I've heard it pronounced two different ways now, but K-State is going with Lane Gang now. Andrew Lane Gang is the the pronunciation. Uh, I feel like we'd mispronounce that. Yeah, I think we'd mispronounce that like 150 times now in the the show's history but that we pronounce it differently each time so thank you we will yeah note that one andrew yeah i got your back andrew all right i'm not gonna i'm not gonna let anybody mess up your name everybody loves hearing their own name they don't want to hear it incorrectly um the, the other thing i was gonna say cole you were making the point about carver willis i think if you want to have optimism about this group this year for a number of reasons you can and connor riley certainly has been a coveted offensive line coach and done a great job but Carver Willis is like a great case study for that because remember how we felt about Carver Willis going to Columbia, Missouri last year? You know, early on in the season, we were like, oh, this isn't good, man. I mean, Carver Willis is going to have to go out there and play at tackle against this Missouri defensive line. Like, this is no, we are not feeling good about this at all. And by the end of the year, you were like, damn, man, Carver Willis is pretty good. Like, Carver Willis has come a, a really, really long way. So they, they took him from a guy that looked like he was overmatched to a guy that absolutely looked like he was belong- looked like he belonged by the end of the year. And, you know, it's not like every single year Connor Riley has come out and had the answer right away, and we felt great about the offensive line the entire year, but they always get better, and they always find a way to be a really productive ground game in the Big 12 by the time you get to the end of the season. So those are definitely the things to give you hope, although... The other piece to this is now what has happened with Connor Riley, where he has a lot more on his plate this year, getting the bump up to offensive coordinating duties uh, with the departure of Colin Klein. Matt Wells is there, yes, to to take some of the pressure off, but I think we believe the majority of that is going to fall onto Connor Riley's shoulders. So how does that affect his ability to coach an offensive line that now this year is going to be almost completely new from a here are your front five starters perspective? It could. Uh, certainly when this lo- appears to be a year where more attention is required to that position group for the reasons that we have already mentioned, um, kind of being an overhaul in terms of who they're going to rely on um, compared to the, the prior few years where it was the same group constantly. So it, it's a fair question to ask. I don't think any of us really have those answers, so to speak. We're kind of just 
pontificating a little bit here because we don't watch practice. We don't know how much time is lost between Riley and the offensive line just because of his new duties. We don't know. It, it might be pretty negligible. It might be pretty significant. Uh, we would just be kind of guessing if we pretended like we knew exactly what it was going to look like. But I imagine that they've mentioned Brian LePac having an offensive line background, bringing in Drew Lytle as a, I don't know if he's an analyst or a quality control coach, Drew Little, sorry, not Lytle, Drew Little. That, that the answer is probably in those decisions that they do anticipate having some effect, but they've already made up for it with those personnel and staffing choices. So that's a very solid point. It's a very solid point. Getting some extra resources in there to help. And again, you do have a co-offensive coordinator title for Matt Wells too. So hopefully it's not all, all falling on, on Connor Riley. Connor Riley probably wears some home field apparel. I would imagine, uh, you know, he's a, he's a pretty sharp dude. He's, he's young and hip and cool. And that's what all the cool kids are doing. Get to homefieldapparel.com. You can choose from a hundred plus K state designs there. They got a new drop. Make sure you get that shooting shirt, wear it at your wedding. Uh, wear it with your in-laws, wear it to a bar mitzvah, whatever it might be, and take a picture and send it to Cole so you can wear that thing anywhere. Uh, homefieldapparel.com. Use promo code 3 mile 23 to get 15% off your first order. We've even got the hookup for you there. You can venture into 100-plus other teams if you would like to as well, like Derek, who likes to get creative at homefieldapparel.com. Uh, legitimately one of the most popular uh, places that you can get college gear, and DY is wearing... T- Texas A&M as we're talking about Connor Riley being that, offensive coordinator because Colin Klein left to go to Texas A&M you're wearing a, a Texas A&M home field apparel shirt DY or are you fired up that did you did you really just like you you own that like what in the what what in the hell is I'm the matter sure, with you? I'm getting ones that are timely and significant like I I like this, this is the most disgusting act you've ever committed. Like I'm, I'm as mad at you as ever. Like it's not just Colin Clyde. Like I hate those weirdos. Like I don't like, I don't like them either. This is not because I like them. This is I want to get like time. Like I got UConn, Baylor, and Kentucky coming. Okay, well I'm gonna like next time I'm with you, I'm literally gonna burn that shit. All right, like we are going to burn it because. 1998, Derek. What the? <laughs> I was about to ask if you were alive in 1998. Um, of course, I was. <laughs> wow. It was a rough year for Ohio State too. Home field. I, I am sorry that DY supported A and M. I mean, that, that's the one school we can't get on board with our our K State fans buying. But I'm rocking home field hoodie right here. So K State, okay, thank you, Cole. thank you for for saving this <laughs> Texas A and M, dude. I boy, <laughs> I'll just. I think I just lost two friends. I tell you what, you want to you want to go get a you, you want to get a Butler shirt. Uh, you want to get an FAU. Uh, I'm sure they probably have FAUs. I sprinkle in some Loyola. Uh, I yeah, go get order. They they have a sister jean shirt, don't they? Doesn't home field. I mean, why don't you get that too? Do you what? Gosh, oh, you know that makes me want to wash this down with a bottle of Ben Holiday bottled in Bond Bourbon right now in the you morning. Know, what, 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 I, I'm pretty sure it's on the other side of the spray. But John's like, I'm sure Connor Riley does this and. He, said about home field. I thought he was going to say Connor Riley did Manscaped. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my Manscaped five ultra lawnmower to your sh- Aggie's t shirt when I see you. I'm gonna saw that thing's so powerful. I'm gonna saw that shirt in half instead of burn it. Get ready. Oh my God. Well all I know is this home field apparel makes great, great quality stuff. But Derek bought that one. It probably costs ten times the normal price for a shirt and will perform half as well because it is a Texas A and M T shirt. Uh, homefieldapparel.com 3 mod 23 is the promo code to get 15% off your first order we're back in just a moment we appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast you have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023 and don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day kcsn.substack.com get ready here it is. This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, people. That is Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. 
Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. It is very much springtime flower, springtime flowery time of year right now if you're walking around outside and you can feel exactly like all those flowers that you see in your neighbor's yard. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code KCSN for 20% off free shipping. We've always got the hookup for you uh hate making a mess not to worry this bad boy is waterproof uh, we're getting to the ocean again are we shaving the shower in the bath or you know shawnee mission park i they've got a nice dog park if you take the dog out there i guess you know make sure that it's hopefully later in the day but you could walk out into the little water place where the dogs go you know you could you could get it done out there if you really needed to what's that are we, sh- are we shaving the dog no you're not shaving the dog um, but this thing, because it is waterproof, you know, the, the lawnmower 5.0 is waterproof. So whether you're in the ocean on vacation in California, but we already covered that angle. So I thought we'd hit, you know, if you're in Kansas city, like, uh, at least two of the three of us here on the show, you can go to Shawnee mission park. I don't care where it is, heritage park, oh. wherever it might be. Oh, now I'm in Kansas city. That's good to know. I thought I was in Oklahoma or Texas, according to the jokes you guys like to make about how South I am. So. That's good. That's true. Cole, if you want to, Cole, you can go to the Red River and uh, you can walk in there and you can get it done there too because it is waterproof. So no problems with the Lawnmower 5.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code KCSN at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code KCSN at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning wear, Cole. In your pants. That, That is correct. That is correct. All right. Uh, offensive line, where were we? <laughs> and we got a little off topic. <laughs> so, how do we feel about Easton Kilty? All right. Easton Kilty is a guy that's drawing a lot of intrigue out of the transfer portal. That was a pretty big win for K State to go get him from North Dakota. Pretty highly coveted. And uh, offensive line is uh, can be a trickier spot in the portal. Um, the big guys, whether it's defensive linemen or offensive linemen, can be tougher to get than skill position players in the portals. This is a really important one. What what are reasonable expectations for uh, for Easton Kilty? At this point, my expectation is that he's likely the starting left tackle for Kansas State just based on the practices that we have seen. It's been four of them, four or five, I think, at this point. And, and obviously, we only get to see the first 30, first 40, 45 minutes, whatever it may be. But every time they go 11 on 11, whether – Carver Willis, who's, I don't know if he was banged up or just resting, whether he's been available or not, the starting left tackle has been Easton Kilty. So, you know, from a performance standpoint, you know, we'll see what we, we'll see what we get there. But, you know, just having them being so convicted that he's the starting left tackle makes me feel really good about how this thing has developed since January. Yeah, I think you like his versatility, just the ability in a pinch to go into the interior, play guard, either guard position, you could slide out to right tackle. So if some injury does occur, you know, you've got John Astori as a reserve offensive tackle that they believe has a high future or high hopes for him as well. I think he'll see significant snaps. So I think, you know, Kilty's versatility is a big deal. The only concern you have, especially early on and early in Big 12 play, is just adjusting to the speed and physicality of the game because he's a guy that spent his entire career at the FCS level at North Dakota. So you're going to see an uptick in competition. There's no doubt he's a really good player and guys have made that adjustment and done really well coming to the FBS level to the power five level. But I think there will be a little bit of an adjustment there for him. So uh, we'll be really interested to see how he does early on in the season as he goes up against a significantly tougher competition. Yeah. What's Arizona's pass rush like? UT Martin. Well, uh, well but the, Arizona, though, that, that would be the, the concern, right? I mean, I suppose Tulane, too, but Arizona is what I wonder about in their pass rush. I, they weren't, you know, they were known more for the offense than the defense last year, but I think that defense was actually pretty, pretty solid. They were, too. They were. Yeah, they took a, they took a significant jump on defensive side of the football last year. Now, I'd be lying to you if I'd started breaking down the, uh, the non con or in season opponents. We'll do that later on here in the offseason as we get ready, but. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they have some some solid players up front. Uh, center, you mentioned center earlier, D.Y. How do you project out 
the the battle at center. You're you're replacing a guy that in Hayden Gillum that uh, Cole rattled off the numbers earlier. Obviously, has started a ton of games there. Yeah, that that's something that's probably the the one undetermined spot or one of the undetermined spots on the offensive line. And because it is undetermined, then you got one of the guard spots that is likely undetermined just because you have a guy that can play both of those. So center, obviously, Sam Hecht has kind of been someone that's been discussed as a potential candidate by the coaches. But we've seen Hadley Panther there with the ones just as much in the spring. So I don't think they quite have the solution or have made a conclusion on which direction they want to go. I would imagine it's one of those. If it is Hecht, I think Hadley Panzer starts a guard. If it is Panzer, I think Andrew Langang becomes one of the starting guards. Yeah, I think, you know, Sam Hecht's going into his fourth year in the program now, Mill Valley product. I think they think highly of him, former walk-on. I wouldn't be surprised if he started. I think by the start of Big 12 play, there is a, a decent chance of the starting offensive line from left to right is Easton Kilty, uh, Andrew Langang. Hadley Panzer at center, Taylor Portier at right guard, and Carver Willis at right tackle. We'll see. Uh, and that's not a knock on Sam Heck. I could just see them going with the veteran guy that's got 20 plus starts in his career at Hadley Panzer at center. They've got some versatility there. They can rotate as well. So I think they like both options. Uh, I think Sam Heck can be a solid player as well, 6'4, 285 pounds. But that is a question mark. I mean, Hayden Gillum started 27 consecutive games for this team. You know, as the center, you're kind of the coordinator of that offensive line and, and calling out all the packages and the blitzes and calling out the defense. So uh, it'll be it'll be a big role for him. Certainly think he's capable, but we'll have to see it. He hasn't started a game yet in his career. D.Y., have you guys had Connor Riley in, in spring ball for an availability? Yep. Like, what, what did Connor Riley have to say about all this? You know, about the offensive line specifically, I think, you know, to be honest, I think he seemed a little bit more fired up about that group. Um, I really liked the way that they were trending, <laughs> excuse me, that they were trending um, in terms of the center position. Uh, really no hints or clues as to how that would unfold. You could tell that it was something that they were kind of going back and forth on. Uh, but uh, Sam Hecht is someone I can tell just from talking to those behind the scenes. Whether it be this year or next year is the guy that they really have confidence in. I mean, to a man, I will say this. Uh, you talk to someone in the building and they'll say that he will be better than Hayden Gillum. And you know, I know some people will roll their eyes or because I know Hayden Gillum wasn't you know, a huge fan favorite by the end of his thing. But I, I think that is substantial to say and may be a clue as to what they envision doing on the offensive line, at least at some point. So is, that, is it best-case scenario, then, that, that Hecht is at center? Is that the best-case scenario for the offensive line, or is it what Cole just laid out? You know, I would assume... Well, I, I think a lot of us would say what Cole laid out, just because that that doesn't necessarily include any walk-ons and includes some highly-rated recruits. But just because they're, they were highly-rated recruits at one time and not walk-ons, doesn't mean it's the best case scenario. Uh, I don't know that we can really share what the best case scenario is with any conviction without seeing more practice than any of us have seen. Right. So, but just on the naked eye and when I say naked eye really blind because we're going in blind, we just look at the recruiting rankings and I think people would be more excited and intrigued about an offensive line combination that would include Hadley Panzer at center and Andrew Lane getting a left guard just because of the recruiting processes comparison between Lane and Hecht I think that really is what plays the large role in it yeah I mean I think Lane this is a huge year for Lane because there were a lot of high hopes for him when he came into Kansas State this is year four now and you know he hasn't played a significant number of snaps yet but I certainly think there's talent there so a big year for him because I think he has a high ceiling when you talk about those guys. The other thing, though, I'll mention, and you guys know this, Connor Riley rotates his offensive linemen. So he's got, he's going to play a sixth and seventh guy. So even if we say Hadley Panzer starts, and I know center is not really a position you love to change in and out because of the snaps and everything and the inconsistency that could lead to there, but I could see them rotating seven guys up front. I could see Hadley Panzer and Sam Heck playing each at center in the games uh, and then rotating at guard as well and getting 
John Pastore in an offensive tackle as your kind of third swing tackle, right or left side, et cetera. So um, I, I think I, that, yeah. You know, now that you say it out loud, there's two things here. One, just because Angel Langing has played minimally doesn't mean he can't play. One, I think the one year he got really set back with a, you know, a health predicament that that probably slowed his progress at one point and his development at one point. And two, like, and then I know Colorado likes to rotate, but there's only so much rotation you can do, right? And are you going to play Andrew Lang Gang over guys that have played for forever in your program? I mean, technically, and I know people just assume he can't play when he doesn't play, he's blocked by Cooper Beebe. Do you really want him playing over yeah. Cooper Beebe? Yeah. So th- there's that. And secondly, um, rotating at center makes me uneasy. Yeah. So if they within a game, because you're asking the quarterback to kind of understand, interpret, and adjust on the fly to two different kinds of snaps, not always the safe thing to do, especially with the quarterback technically in his first year starting as well. So if you do want Sam Hack to be in that rotation, I think he just has to be your starting center. Yeah, I, I would I would probably agree with that after hearing you outline it. I think you would then probably rotate the guards in and out, Hadley Panzer, Portier, and Andrew Langang. But I would I did want to say, just because of what you said about Langang, D.Y., because it's a good point, I want to echo that. I mean, look, John, you just said earlier, Carver Willis, things clicked last year. It was year four for Carver Willis. Big 12 play came together. He became a really solid offensive tackle, and he hadn't played or really started a game until last year. He struggled a little early, and then it came on. This will be year four for Andrew Langang. There's no reason. There's there's pedigree. There's talent there. There's no reason it couldn't be the same situation for him up front for this offensive line. So maybe this is the year that it clicks for him as he finally gets an opportunity because DY's right. He's he's been blocked. I mean, we just talked about 147 career starts up front. Like there wasn't really like you weren't gonna bench one of those fifth, sixth year seniors that all came back. And and credit to Langang and others for hanging around the program when those guys did come back and yeah. uh, blocked them. Yeah, you're not going to bench a, a, a future Ring of Honor recipient, uh, two NFL players. Um, that's just not happening. The same could be said for John Pastore. Uh, year three, not year four, but he's in a similar spot at offensive tackle. And everyone's like, well, he hasn't played yet, and he was supposed to be good. Uh, he's dealt with some injury issues, I think, related to concussions. So that's also what's blocked him. And he was buying KT Leviston, right? So Christian Duffy, right? The, those are both what three-year starters. Some of these guys can be good, even though they haven't played. The offensive line had such, uh, what do you call it, longevity in about every position. But some of these guys were just blocked. Yeah, well, D.Y., you and I heard it last season early on in the year when um, when Christian Duffy had the foot injury and couldn't give it a go at the start of the season. If John Pastore was healthy, he was banged up at the time, he may have been the starter at right tackle. Because that's how highly they think of John Pastore, and he was a redshirt freshman at that time, six foot six, offensive tackle. I think he has a very high ceiling. Uh, I'm eager to see him play this year, and, and I think he will have meaningful snaps. Yeah, it was interesting well, at the beginning of last season. Because Kansas State had uh, a whole uh, bunch of like injuries that were kind of under the table, right? Uh, Keegan Johnson couldn't go at the start; uh, that wasn't under the table. But Garrett Oakley missed the first few games. Uh, John Pastore was banged up, so it, it'll it'll be interesting to see guys like that that people probably aren't expecting big things from because they didn't do it last year, but they were actually just banged up. Well, just to tie a bow on the story from the beginning of the the pod, when we were frustrated with Carver Willis, we were going to Columbia thinking like, man, I wish John Pastore was healthy because we had heard good things about him and wanted him to be the guy that would step in and play there. But he wasn't, and it, it was Carver Willis who then eventually wound up taking off. So, yeah, I mean, this is, if you want to build the optimistic case about the offensive line, it's it's that sort of development. And for Lane Gang, there was the one of the videos. Now, we're kind of grasping at straws here, but that's sort of what you have to do in, in spring football. But one of those videos that they had of a practice, like he was the one that was breaking down the entire team. So it sure seems like he's a guy that's pretty well respected and you know, if he was a guy that wasn't going to be ready to really contribute and play well, would they have him be doing that? I, I don't know. You know, I mean, I guess you can answer that for yourself. But I took that as a positive sign when we're here in the doldrums of, of spring trying to break something down. I guess the bottom line, I know what Derek's answer, as long as it hasn't changed from what he wrote at uh, K-State Online, is 
do you expect this to be a weak link on the team? Do you expect this to be something that that trips up this team this year when they are replacing so much? In general, no. But if it does, it'll be early. Yeah, I was going to say that. Like, I I think by you know fifth, sixth game, I think they'll start to become really solid. But I could see them get off to a little bit of slow start. Like, offensive line is a group that really relies on that cohesion and gel factor and playing together as a unit. And you know, there'll be a lot of new guys up front playing different spots, potentially rotating in and out. So they're going to have to get used to it. They're going to have to get used to blocking for a new quarterback and Avery Johnson as well, who's, you know, more of that dual threat guy. And how much does Avery stay in the pocket? I think Avery's incredibly mature. I think we've already seen enough that like he's not going to guy that's going to just elude the pocket unnecessarily. He's going to stand in there and try to deliver strikes, not panic and, and evade anything. So, uh, but you are blocking for a different quarterback, a different style who can really break out and run as well. So, I think they'll be solid by Big 12 play, but I could foresee a little bit of a slow start, and you just hope that you, you still win football games while that's occurring and they're they're learning to gel together. Yeah, that's I, I would just take it more global to the overall offense when you're talking about a slow start. I mean, we're talking about new coordinator, new coordinators, if, if you want to incorporate Connor Riley and Matt Wells, new starting quarterback and Avery Johnson, and then a very new offensive line up front. So we like a lot of the pieces that are in place there, but I think it would be unreasonable to go into that expecting it to be seamless and not to have some growing pains with the offense. The offensive line would be uh, a part of that. But look, I trust Connor Riley. Um, I trust what we've seen throughout his entire career at, at K-State. And, and I think by the end of the year, this this will be a group that we feel at least pretty good about. Uh, okay, well, there's your offensive line preview in the books. Made it through. We'll uh, we'll get to the defense coming up next as we roll through these uh, these spring previews for K State football. We appreciate as always the help of our friends at Holiday Distillery, Manscaped. Get your lawnmower 5.0. Get to homefieldapparel.com. Just don't buy Texas A and M shirts. Uh, for Nick Springer behind the scenes, for Derek Young and Cole Manbeck, I'm John Kurtz. Thanks for listening to another edition of Three Maw. <laughs>